Hello. In this video, we are going to go over a design example for a BJT differential amplifier. We uh, have some design constraints. Uh, we are going to design our circuit using uh, dual power supplies of plus minus 15 volts. Uh, we are going to bias our transistors with a quiescent current of approximately half a milliamp. Uh, and we are shooting for a differential gain of about 25 volts per volt and a common mode gain that is less than or equal to one. Uh, and we're going to do three things. First, we're going to design the circuit to these specifications. Uh, then we're going to estimate the common mode rejection ratio as well as the, uh, the input resistance, the differential input resistance, I should say. All right, D. And then we're going to comment on how we can improve the common mode rejection ratio once we have um, estimated this value. So let's go ahead. First step, whenever we are designing um, uh, any circuit, is to draw the circuit topology. Um, I didn't say whether it was balanced or single-ended, so I'm going to um, add here a single-ended output design. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and draw the skeleton of my circuit. Since it's going to be single-ended, I'm going to take my output out of the collector of transistor Q2. And therefore, I don't need a collector uh, resistor on Q1. And here for my current source, I'm going to use the simplest possible configuration, which is just um, a resistor connected to negative VEE, in this case, negative 15 volts. All right, these are going to be my RE resistors, RE and RE, and uh, I'm going to refer to this as my resistor R. All right, so step number one, I'm going to, uh, since I'm going to be taking my output out of this node over here, this is going to be, maybe I'll draw it towards the other side for consistency. That's my output voltage right there. And so I'm going to want to center it uh, for maximum output voltage swing. Now I need to distribute the amount of voltage I have available. I have 30 volts available in between my supplies. I'm going to have to distribute it uh, between all my circuit components. So I'm going to try to shoot uh, for having uh, uh, zero volts down here in the node between the two emitter resistors. And that means that I have approximately 15 volts available um, for my upper, for the upper half of my circuit. And so I will want to uh, somewhat center my output voltage with respect to that. Now I do need to account for the fact that there's going to be some voltage drop across my emitter resistors, but for now I'm going to assume that uh, that, that voltage is going to be small and therefore I'm just going to say I'm going to center my output voltage between 15 volts and zero, uh, which is at 7.5 volts. So step number one, I'm going to choose my RC resistor uh, to center my output voltage. for maximum output swing. And so if my range uh, goes from zero to approximately 15 volts, that means I want my V out, my uh, DC value for V out. Maybe I should make that clear. I write in capital letter to be equal to uh, 7.5. Okay, and since V out is going to be 15 minus the voltage drop across RC, which is IC times RC, then my RC is going to be equal to. Um, 15 minus V out divided by IC, which is 15 minus 7.5 divided by 0.5 milli. 
which is uh, 7.5 or 15 excuse me kilo ohms so that was our step number one And that's again assuming a you know a collector current uh, for Q2 of um, uh, half a milliamp, which is what we're giving as a design specification, um, and which which we're going to set uh, by setting our tail resistor to the right value. And that's going to be our next step. I'm going to select my tail resistor uh, to make the current through that resistor equal to uh, one milliamp, so that then. Um, I will have in the quiescent point half a milliamp through each branch. And it is true that as we apply an input signal, uh, the current through each branch is going to, to vary slightly around that point, but that's going to be the quiescent point. Uh, the Q point is the center point where half of the current is steered through each branch of the circuit. So step number two, I'm going to choose R so that my overall current in the tail I'm going to call it I tail is equal to 2 IC which is 1 milliamp that's, that's getting too crowded there so that I tail equals 2 IC equals 1 milliamp and therefore if I assume my voltage here, I'm trying to set that to zero volts, I will have uh, my I tail will be equal to zero minus negative 15 volts divided by R, and therefore R will be equal to 15 divided by I tail, or 15 divided by 1 milliamp, which is 15 kilo ohms. So that's step number two, 15 kilo ohms. And the last thing uh, that I have to do is figure out the value of my um, RE resistors, my meter resistors, in order to set my differential gain to the right value, 25 volts per volt. And that's going to be step number three. Step number three will be select or choose my RE values. Uh, for the correct differential gain, so for AD equal to 25. Since this is a single-ended output um, differential amplifier, my differential gain is going to be equal to RC divided by 2 times the overall limit of resistance, 2 times little RE plus RE, as it is. Uh, one half of the gain for the differential output. Uh, since the values for RC um, are the value for RC is set, the value for little re is set, where we can calculate it. Our little re, I'll just put it here, is equal to uh, Vt divided by IC. At room temperature, I'm going to assume Vt is 25 millivolts, IC is 0.5 milliamps, and therefore little re is 50 ohms in this case for both transistors. And so I will have ID, or 25, being equal to 15K divided by 2 times 50 plus RE. And if we solve for RE, comes out to be around 250 ohms. And it applies to both sides. So that's it. I have my amplifier. Uh, I'm meeting the specifications. Now I do need to figure out what's the value of my common mode gain because there is a design spec that says it needs to be less than one. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate my common mode gain, which for a 
um, single-ended output in this case is going to be equal to RC divided by uh, little re plus capital R plus two times the tail resistor, two times R. And so in this case it is 15K divided by 50 plus 250 uh, plus 30K. And that is close to 0.5 before it meets the specification. If it didn't meet it for whatever reason, then we will have to go through an iterative process and try to improve it. Um, and we will basically be guiding ourselves uh, by the equation of the common mode gain to see what parameters we can tweak in order to, uh, to decrease it. All right, so we need to calculate CMRR and the uh, differential input resistance. The differential input resistance is going to be equal to um, twice little re plus capital re. And so it will be twice uh, 50 plus 250. Or, um, sorry, not twice, but two beta. I think it's coming out to be something really low. Excuse me there. Uh, 2 beta times little re plus capital re. Uh, so it will be 200 times 50 plus 250, which is 60 kilo ohms. So we can calculate now our CMRR. Which is going to be uh, the ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain. Uh, which is 25 over 50, sorry, over 0.5, um, so around 50. Or equivalently, we could have calculated the CMRR uh, using our equation uh, that was basically the tail resistor R divided by uh, little re plus capital R, which will be, this is an approximation, so it will be approximately equal to 15K divided by 50 plus 250. Or 15K divided by 300, which is also approximately equal to 50. Uh, if we wanted to calculate the CMRR in dBs, it will be equal to 20 times the log base 10 of 50, or uh, 34 dBs. So this was our input resistance, and this is our uh, CMRR, both in dBs and in linear. Uh, next, we're going to look at ways to improve the CMRR. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at, uh, at the equation for CMRR that is based on circuit parameters. So uh, the tail resistor R divided by little re plus capital R E. And so the first way that we could improve our CMRR will be by um, decreasing the denominator. So uh, if we decrease either little re or capital R E, uh, the denominator will, uh, will decrease, thus increasing CMRR. So uh, how to increase? CMRR, number one, decreasing the expression RE plus RE. Um, which is going to be either by reducing the value of RE or reducing the value of little RE, which is going to involve increasing the value of the quiescent current. Um, and so in both cases, I'm going to, um, if I modify capital R E or little R E, I'm going to alter the gain of the circuit. If I uh, modify little R E, I have to increase IC. I'm going to disturb my quiescent point for the circuit. Um, and so basically this involves uh, altering Q point altering uh, gain for the circuit, 
etc. The other option that I have is increasing the value of the numerator. And so option number two is increasing the value of R. And R, remember, is the resistance looking uh, into the tail branch of the circuit. And so I can easily uh, increase my R resistor by, instead of connecting a resistor R, connecting a current source with a very high output resistance. The current source will set the quiescent current or the current through that branch to 1 milliamp. Um, and if the current source has a very high output resistance, uh, then that will increase my CMRR. And so increasing R. And so one possibility will be connecting, or maybe I should say replacing R with a current source with high value of R out. And so in the next video we're going to explore uh, how to do that, how to replace the tail resistor with a current source with a high output resistance, and we'll see how that affects the common rejection ratio for the circuit. Thank you.